Welcome once again to Getting Naked with Pastor Bob. If you're just joining this series for the first time, don't watch this. Seriously. This is a progressive series, and the first one is in the playlist on YouTube. So go there first, watch the first one, and then catch up. That's the way to do it. So we're the second one now. Getting Naked with Pastor Bob, we're looking at the core part of our faith, the naked part, stripping everything else away, all the religion and everything else, and what do we have left? I told you last time that we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today, and that's the next part in this great progression. You know, last week we talked about the fact that it's really important that we understand that God loves us first, that our faith, our whole existence, our spirituality is wrapped up in this one fact. He loved us first, and we love him as a response to his love. And we talked about the fact that so many people are trying really hard to love God and falling short every time. And the truth is, we can't love him. Our love is a response to his love. It's hard to love someone who we don't quite understand very well. You know what I'm saying? I can fall in love with somebody because I can see them, because I can smell them, because I can hear them, because they're tangible. How do you fall in love with someone who is omnipresent, everywhere at the same time, who is spirit? The Bible says that those who love him, love him in spirit and in truth, that God is love incarnate. And so that's where we start. He loved us first and we respond to that love and we fall in love with him back. Well, he gave us the tools to do that as well. You know, Jesus didn't leave us with the system. He left us with his spirit. He didn't say, now, if you want to become a Christian, here are all the steps to do it. And as you live your Christian life, here are all the steps you're going to have to follow to be successful. No, he didn't do that. He left us with a guide instead of a map, with a guide instead of a system. Instead of saying, here are all the rules and regulations, you know what he did? He said, here is my spirit. Here is me. God in the bod. <laughs> Here's me inside. You know, principles alone don't satisfy your hunger. Folks, some of you have been trying to live the Christian life, and some have even fallen away from it because, well, it didn't work for you. And I understand why it doesn't work for so many people, because you never get the foundations that make it work. First foundation, he loved us first. Second foundation, we have his Holy Spirit that empowers us, that instructs us, that gives us sight. Pretty cool. So principles alone don't satisfy the hunger. And that's why systems always promise a, a, a future revival that never comes. Never comes. You see, they can't produce community because they're designed really to keep people apart. That's how it works. When we continue to focus on rituals, on services, those kinds of things, we simply become spectators. And I've always said that I think the church is the biggest spectator sport around. People come, they watch somebody, they sing a few songs, and they go home. That is not what Christianity was designed to be. Am I saying that's wrong? No. But I am saying that's wrong if that's all there is. You see, by holding up standards, by motiv motivating people to conform to a particular system and encouraging people to pretend that they're something that they're not, well, it gets frustrating. People lose heart and they fall away. We don't question. We don't doubt. We get discouraged. And we hide things even more. And the more organization you bring to your life, especially your church life, the less life it will actually contain. So what am I saying here? 
I'm saying that Jesus didn't leave us with a system. He left us with his spirit. He left us with his guide instead of a map. Now, there are all this talk these days about our spirit guides, and I'm not talking about that. Well, maybe I am in a greater sense, but I'm not talking about some kind of spirit guide that knows nothing and just kind of guides you through life and isn't really connected all that much. I'm talking about God. Now, the Bible says that God is triune. In other words, he is three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what that means. I just said a few minutes ago that the Bible says that the Father, God, is omnipresent. Everywhere at the same time, he's spirit. Do I understand that? <laughs> Absolutely not. Why? Because I don't know that kind of reality. You know, when God created this world, folks, he created it with some very finite things. We understand time and space. I don't understand anything outside of time and space, but God lives outside of time and space. I understand tangible. I understand what I can see. I absolutely don't understand what I can't see very well. But you see, God created all the things around me in finite ways. Things that I can see, things that are tangible, all of that, but that's not how he lives and that's not who he is. The Bible says that he is spirit. Those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth, the Bible says. And secondly, he sent his only son in the form of a man to live among us. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one, he said. And then he promised his Holy Spirit before he left. And he said, I will send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the instructor, and he will guide you into all truth. Paul further described the Holy Spirit in many ways, but he, he described him in terms of who he is and what he does. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Pretty cool. And he said that the Holy Spirit lives in our innermost being. Now, I like that part. The Bible says, and out of our innermost being will flow rivers of living water. John 7, 39. What does that mean? Well, <clears throat> it means that deeper than your problems, deeper than your understanding, deeper than your emotions, deeper than your depression, deeper than your happiness, deeper than your understanding, deeper than anything you experience is the Holy Spirit in your innermost being. And he begins to work from the inside out. Now, this is really key. We always pretend that the Holy Spirit's out there somewhere. <laughs> and so many of the songs that we sing are written that way, and I hate those. I really do. Because it gives us a false sense of who the Holy Spirit is. We keep asking the Holy Spirit to fall. Well, I'm sure that there are manifestations of the Holy Spirit on the outside, but if that's all you think of the Holy Spirit as somebody who falls when you go to church, you know, descends in the room, whatever, wow, we have it wrong then. We keep thinking the Holy Spirit's out there somewhere. It's kind of a, well, kind of a mystical thing, and I can't quite grab it. I don't know what to do, but the Bible says the Holy Spirit isn't an it, it's a him. He's the third person of the Trinity. And the Bible says that when Jesus died on the cross, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of us. And he works from the inside out. Not just the inside, but in your innermost being, out. Now, what does that mean for you and I? It means that he begins to work through your depression. He begins to work through your, your misunderstanding. He begins to give you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, the whole list. And when those things begin to become part of your life, you realize that it's not you because you didn't have those things. It's him. And he's beginning the process of making you into the person that you know you can be and he'd love you to be. 
So folks, he's a guide. He's not a map. He didn't leave us with rules and regulations. He sent the comforter. He sent the instructor inside. And you see, that makes a huge difference because then you can become everything you want to be because he gave you that desire in the first place. And so it isn't a bunch of rules and regulations anymore. Now you have the freedom to be who you can be. Now, that doesn't mean you just go out and do whatever you want because the Holy Spirit will let you know that too. The Bible says he convicts us and then continues to guide us into all truth. You know, some people hit each other over the head all the time with what they're doing wrong. And their emphasis is on criticism. It's not true with the Holy Spirit. His emphasis is on the future. What you can become. What you're becoming. Who you are in Christ. And he says, like Paul says, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you? He said, keep running. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Don't worry about what you've done wrong at this point. You know, brush yourself off. Say, Lord, <laughs> I'm sorry. I blew it again, and let's get running again. Let's just get in the race and let's run it together. The Holy Spirit. So that's the second thing that's important for you to know. First of all, that he loves you first, and our love is a response to his love. And secondly, he sent his spirit to live inside of you to produce all of those things that you can't produce yourself. The Holy Spirit. Well, I'm excited for this series. And I'm excited for you to join me every single week as we discover our faith, our naked faith, our faith without all the religion and everything else, but our faith according to scripture and the way that Jesus designed it to be. God bless you. Have a great day.